This is an optimization example. We're looking for the global extremes of a function f of x equals 2x over the quantity x squared plus 8. And we have two intervals we're going to explore. We're going to first find the global extremes on the open interval, negative 2 to 3. And second, we'll find the global extremes when we look at the function on the closed interval from negative 3 to 1. We start by thinking about where the critical points are. And I want to remind you that critical points are where we have the derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. And so in order to find critical points, our first step is to calculate our derivative. So we look at our original function, and it's a quotient, so I need to use the quotient rule. And I'll live to sing the song. Lo de high minus high de low over low low. So low is x squared plus eight, so lo d high, derivative of two x is two, minus high, 2x d low, which is another 2x. So when I multiply that out, I get x squared times 2 minus 4x squared, giving me a grand total of negative 2x squared plus 16. And uh, the, the denominator is actually never beneficial. I've never seen a beneficial reason to multiply out the denominator. So this is our derivative. Well, once we have the derivative, uh, we need to find out where that's zero or does not exist. To see where it's zero, we look at the numerator, negative 2x squared plus 16, and we solve the equation, when is the numerator equal to zero? Uh, to find points where the derivative doesn't exist, we're interested in where the function's not defined, so we there explore where is the denominator equal zero. When I solve the equation for the numerator equals zero, I get x squared equals eight, which when you find the square root, uh, we get plus or minus square root of 8, or plus or minus 2 square root of 2. So there are two points where the derivative is 0. Those are horizontal slopes. And when I try to solve for x squared in the make the denominator is 0, I get x squared equals negative 8. And that has no solutions. So when I'm looking for points where the derivative does not exist, there actually aren't any points. We take those points, we put them on a number line. So we have a a number line describing the values of f prime of x. We put our two points, negative 2 square root of 2 and positive 2 square root of 2. Those are both where the function f prime equals 0. Well, we want to do some sign analysis just to get an idea of what's happening. So um, we look at the decimal value so we know what kind of points we were testing. And when I plug in values like negative 3 or 0, or positive 3 into the f prime function, so we're, we're using this formula here and we're plugging in points into that expression, we get these signs. And so we can interpret this. My sign analysis for f prime tells me that my function is decreasing, so I'm going down horizontal slope and then increasing, so I have a minimum at negative 2 square root of 2. On the other hand, at positive 2 squared of 2, my first derivative is positive, so my function was increasing horizontal and then decreasing. And so I have a local maximum at positive 2 squared of 2. And I want to emphasize that the word at is for points, and when we say a function has something happen at a point, that represents an x value. All right, great. So here's our summary. We, using our first derivative, have decided that we have two critical points, and we've categorized them. f has a local minimum at negative 2 squared of 2, and f has a local maximum at positive 2 squared of 2. Once we have our critical points, we can now go to our intervals. So let's look at our first interval, the open interval from negative 2 to 3. Well, negative 2 to 3 is an open interval, and the extreme value theorem requires that we have a closed interval. And so we're not guaranteed that we actually have global extremes. We may or may not, and we'll have to find out. So we, we do know that this interval includes a single critical point, 2 square root of 2, because our other critical point is negative 2 square root of 2, which is outside of the interval. We need to see whether the endpoints or the critical point have the extreme values. And one way that we could do that is with a calculator. For example, we could type in the formula for our function. And I want to emphasize this is coming from our original function, 
and it's not coming from the derivative. And if I plug in the endpoints, negative 2, 3, and this decimal value, that's 2 squared of 2, I get three values. And those are my y values. And I can look at them, and I see that the first, uh, at negative 2, I have the most negative number. In fact, the only negative number for our table. And if I compare the values at 3 and 2.828, the value at 2.828, or the square root of two, 2 square roots of 2, is the largest value, and then I find that those are my extremes. But I need to express them in mathematics. Because my interval is open, at negative 2, I actually am not evaluating the function. I'm calculating a limit. Similarly, at 3, because 3 is not included, I'm again calculating a limit of my function. And so these values that I found in the table of negative one-third, six-seventeenths, these values, they're values of the function, but when I'm looking at the interval negative two to three, they represent limits. And so these two points are actually not achieved by the function. The value at two squared of two, though, is a value of the function, not a limit, and so I get an exact value of square root two over four. And now we can interpret these. The lowest value at negative 2, because it was a limit, it is not actually a global minimum. There is no global minimum for this function. The value at 2 squared of 2 is the maximum, and so that is my global maximum. So now we're ready to look at the second interval. Our second interval is the closed interval from negative 3 to 1. Our function is continuous. Um, we looked at, in the previous example, we found where the denominator equals zero and there were no solutions. This function is continuous everywhere. So by the extreme value theorem, we know that f will, it's guaranteed, to have both a global maximum and a minimum on this interval. Our interval this time does not include the positive two root two. It only involves this local minimum at negative two root two. Again, we need to calculate the value at the both endpoints and at our critical point. So this time, because we're doing a closed interval, we're not dealing with limits. We're actually dealing with values of the function in all three cases. And so when I plug in those three values, I get these exact values, negative 6 seventeenths, 2 ninths, and negative square root 2 over 4. And I look at these values, and I compare them. At positive 1, I get the greatest value. And let's see, if I compare these last two values, the second value is the least value. And so I can interpret that. My function has a global minimum at negative 2 square root of 2, and it has a global maximum at x equals 1. And that completes our analysis. We've evaluated the extreme values of our function f of x on the two intervals.